Thank you. So, morning, everybody. Um, I'm actually I, I'm wearing two hats, I think, both in what I'm doing in London and in being here. Uh, one is my academic hat and one is my activist hat. I'm finishing my, my, my DPhil here, uh, uh, though significantly slower than I otherwise would have done because I'm spending quite a lot of time in London. Um, and today, um, as you can see from the headband, I'm more in the, in the activist hat, as I guess I'm going to talk to you briefly about some of the things that we've been involved in and why. Um, an important preface, I think, is that, um, and which I think encapsulates some of the novelty about what's going on in London, um, is that though I've been involved um, with various civil society organisations in various contexts over the last 10 years, I've never been involved in anything like this. And that goes for the vast majority of those with whom I've been working over, over recent months. Um, if you'll excuse uh, my language, there's been a pervasive sense of fuck this, actually, over uh, a wide spectrum of, um, of the, the people with whom we've been uh, working and who have, have been coming down to engage with the occupation. Um, it seems that the occupation is emerging out of um, a very pervasive sense of uh, disaffection, frustration with um, what, is, what is predominantly termed the status quo. There is, there is a, a, a widespread sense of injustice, particularly generationally. Um, the, the, those who are involved in organising um, at the occupation do come from a cross-section of, of British and, and global society, um, but the majority are undoubtedly of my generation. Um, and I think that reflects more than anything, I, I guess, four major <coughs> tranches of, of failure. Um, the first is economic. I mean, clearly neoliberalism is in a period of crisis. In the UK, that's affecting young people particularly. Uh, one in five young people um, don't have a job. The government has um, decided to pay in part for um, our economic difficulties by mortgaging the educational futures of the young generations, the cutting of educational maintenance, maintenance allowance, which is a payment that allows um, you like young people from disadvantaged communities to continue in college and, and onwards, and of course the increasing of fees. So there's this, this, this very, very deep sense that economically things aren't working, the economic status quo is failing. Politically, it's, uh, it, it's, it's the same. Um, I think there was a tide of optimism when the Liberal Democrats were, um, received an impressive share of um, the vote in the last election on a platform of change appealing very much to young people and then promptly reneged on their promise not to increase fees. Um, politics seems very much divorced um, from the kinds of realities and the kinds of discussions that are going on amongst um, British society. Um, and I think this is most profoundly manifest in um, the fact that the political economic system and its inherent contradictions led to crisis in 2008 um, and that crisis has now been bailed out by the people who had very little to do with causing it. So there's almost like this, this double movement slap, I think, to, um, to the majority of society. So politics is failing. There's a, a further sense that I think um, mainstream media is failing. Um, the, the, the third estate really hasn't been doing so awesomely over the last little while. I think this is very much uh, encapsulated in, I guess, the ideological capture of the majority of, of mainstream uh, British media. And the failure of uh, nominally independent institutions such as the BBC to really grapple, I think, with critical questions of political economy. Uh, and this, is, I think, has been reflected at the level of the young people with whom uh, I've been uh, organising over the last few months in a, a rejection of mainstream media. I mean, a turning to uh, social media in alternative forms of information. Um, the fourth failure, I think, is in many ways that of civil society. Um, the, the Occupy movement ref reflects, I think, uh, some, it's, a, it's a very organic phenomenon where people are co collecting together to self-organise in the absence of, um, at least the absence of the perception of sufficient existing structures. This, I think, is, is embodied in the fiore that the Church of England got itself into upon our arrival. I mean, within, within five minutes, the Church of England was cannibalising itself, um, despite the fact that... Um, I mean, there was a huge banner when they put outside uh, the Church of England, uh, outside St Paul's, shortly after we arrived, saying, what would Jesus do? Um, which I think very much <laughs> sums up what has ultimately become the Church's line, that Jesus would be actually in these tents also. Um, but for the first uh, month or so, six weeks, the established uh, and certainly more conservative, financially influenced, um, 
board members of the Church of England had divorced themselves entirely from the kind of cry of disaffection I think the Occupy movement represented. Um, and that, I, I think, in some ways reflects, and I, I was reading the position paper, and I'm sure you were discussing this yesterday, the fact that the sense that civil society has to a degree become co-opted as a kind of apolitical service provider under the context of neoliberalism, as opposed to this radical voice that it once may have been. Um, in the context of these four failures, then, I think um, the what we're seeing in, in, in the occupations around the world and in London uh, also is this very organic, very self-directed, very non-hierarchical, that that's not to idealise it in the least. There are inherent problems and many, many interpersonal problems with, with this as with any other organisation. Um, phenomenon of people gathering together and gathering together um, in a way in which process is actually in many ways as important as, as, as ends. Um, I think um, responding to the failures of civil society, media politics and the economy, you see new forms of economy existing around uh, the occupations themselves. You need to see new forms of political participation with the kind of direct democracy decision making. New forms of media generating information about ourselves and analysis of, 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 um, of uh, the problems with society and with our political economy. Um, in terms of going forward, what I've been um, specifically involved with is the, um, the university, the educational aspect of, um, of the occupation, which is, I guess, a mixture of direct action protest. We assemble illegally in certain locations and discuss matters of civil importance until the police wish to move us on, ultimately fail, because it, it's very, very difficult, difficult even for a British white policeman to move along civilly assembled students discussing things. Um, and we're also creating space in which, um, I guess, traditional knowledge providers and knowledge receivers can come together and learn together. So there's a university tent, a recent um, occupation of a former UBS bank office in the north of the city has taken place, and this is now developing into a free university, if you like. Um, again, key to this is, is, is practice, process as, as much as, uh, uh, as being as much uh, means and end. Um, the goal is very much to bring people together and to engage in the kinds of dialogue, the kinds of participation that, frankly, most people, I think, in our society, certainly of my generation, haven't really been involved with beyond their football team or their school, for example. Um, the next stage, um, and I don't know whether this will work, but it's my hope, um, is, I think, to build... We're working on building a network of facilitators, educators, activists, scholars... Um, schools and youth groups to essentially build on, I think, what is uh, very clearly a widespread latent degree of both disaffection and rage, particularly amongst the young people, which I think was manifest last year, firstly in the student riots, and secondly, of course, in the riots in London. And so I think what we're going to be working towards over the next six, six months um, will be a, a kind of like radical political outreach based perhaps on like the methodologies of Horton, um, to try and harness that, um, that palpable sense that things aren't right and that we need to scream about that um, to political, specific political ends and political awarenesses, if you like. So that's, I guess, that. Thank you.